Welcome to the Pachaya Talk channel and today we are going to go through the zero trust overview. This is our first video in security uh, and to be very precise, SC100, we are trying to target all the topics in SC100. So let's begin with the overview of zero trust. Well, as the name says, this is what exactly it means. It means if we are going to design our strategy with these guidelines, this framework, we will not gonna trust on anyone. Yeah, that sounds strange, but true. Because we're talking about technology, not the friendship or boy or girlfriends or things like that, okay? So let's focus on our uh, IT infrastructure. So let's compare this with the uh, old ways or the on-premises ways so that we could have some reference. Uh, to understand. <clears throat> so we used to think uh, everything inside the perimeter is secure and focused uh, uh, and our security is focused on the perimeter. And if everything inside is like allowed to talk to each other or we presume like everything is secure inside that physical boundary. But with cloud, uh, we have People who are accessing application from anywhere with any device, there is no physical boundary anymore. And that's, that's why we need a different approach for the security. And today, organizations uh, applying this zero trust guidelines or, or, the, or the framework to make their environment more secure. Because with more technology, more availability, there are more threats. And why there are more threats? Because of the exposure. Now everything is not boundary uh, inside the inside one physical boundary. It is open. We have people accessing applications. We have applications which is open for everyone. Uh, people are accessing with any uh, devices or any internet, maybe from uh their personal to public internet so organizations needed something by following which they can be sure or confident that they have applied appropriate security to secure their workloads that's why zero trust comes to the picture and let's go through some guiding principles of zero trust Yes, this is the uh, diagram that I've borrowed from Microsoft. And this shows three guiding principles of zero trust. What are those? Well, verify explicitly, least privilege principle and assume breach, assume breach. These are the three principles that will guide us to secure our environment with zero trust approach. All right. Well, these are just the names. What does this mean? Well, if we talk about verify explicitly, that simply means we won't gonna trust you. We will always authenticate you or authorize on, uh, based on all the available data points. It is like if you're accessing something and suddenly you started accessing from a different location, this is a data point. And we will apply conditions there. Things like that. We will explore each of these in pretty detail in upcoming videos. This is a video of overview. But now I think you are you have an idea what verify explicitly means. Then least privileged principle or least privileged access, which means we will provide access which is needed, not more than that. We will limit user access with just in time or just enough access or administration uh, we will apply risk-based adaptive policies and data protections. 
if you do not have the access to mess around or if your credentials get compromised, even though we are securing the environment because we are minimizing the blast radius by giving you, first of all, we are not giving, we are not opening your credentials 24 seven. We are only opening your credentials when you need the access. So it's not only least privilege, it's least privilege with time expiration. Then we have assume breach, which simply means, let's suppose, what will we do if we think there is a breach? The very first thing, we will try to secure rest of the stuff, right? For example, there's a fire in the apartment, what will you do? You'll try to save whatever you can save, right? So what are we trying to do here? We are minimizing the blast radius and we are securing the other stuff. How can we do that? We could apply the proper segmentation. We can enable the end-to-end -end encryption. We should have the analytics uh, and monitoring in place so that we would we know there is a breach. Far before then the then then uh, accident happened, you know, like it has screwed everything up. <laughs> If we know before, we can control it. Uh, we can apply a threat detection and things like that. So in a in a assume breach mode, we will think with the mindset there is a breach everywhere. With with this idea, we will apply the security. So we will encrypt it. It would not have much impact. And if monitoring analytics in place, we will come to know that there is a breach before uh, this could make a serious damage. All right. So yes, this is the core of zero trust. Instead of believing everything behind the corporate firewall is safe, the zero trust model assume breach and verifies each request uh, as it originates from an uh, uncontrolled network. Regardless of where the request originates or what resource it accesses, the zero trust model teaches us to never trust, always verify. So now we have an idea what zero trust is, but how can we have this implemented? That's the question. So we need to think zero trust as, as an approach that should extend throughout the entire digital estate and serve as an integrated security philosophy and end-to-end -end strategy. This is done by implementing zero trust controls and technologies across six foundational elements. Each of these is a source of signal, a control plane for enforcement and a critical resource to be defended. So let's quickly go through one by one, which will actually cover the entire overview of zero trust. Just a high level overview, but we need to go through in deep from the Azure perspective so that we could cover all the topics as we want to. So identity. Identities, whether they represent people, service, or IoT devices, or any devices or application, define the zero trust control plane. When an identity attempts to access a resource, verify that identity with the strong authentication and ensure access is compliant and typical for that identity. If you remember the example that I, would, I was giving you, if you're accessing certain resources from a particular place in India or particular device for, remotely, then your dev device should be compliant. And if you are accessing the same thing within uh, a five or 10 or 15 minutes from a different location, let's suppose US, then it's not typical. 
then there should be some kind of uh, condition supplied like conditional access which will ask for the mfa and then allow or block identity protection those kind of stuff and of course follow least privileged principles wherever identity comes into the picture then endpoints once an identity has been generated access to a resource data can flow to a variety of different endpoints from iot devices to smartphones from your devices to partner managed devices or on-premise workloads to the cloud hosted servers this diversity they're like too many endpoints coming here there everywhere too much diversity creates a massive attack surface area we need to monitor and enforce device health and compliance of secure access there are multiple ways we can do that intune is uh, uh one of that earlier it was like sccm and we were doing the the uh, in-house corporate based uh, device management but now it's in tune let's go uh, to the next which is application data ultimately hacker or or somebody who is trying to access or uh, compromise your credentials and even you everyone is after data why they want to access or or compromise your environment because they want to access the data that's what they are after for right and you want the data because that's what you are after for you want to secure your data they want to access your data so wherever possible data should remain safe even if it leaves the devices applications infrastructure or network wherever it goes it should be safe right so what what can we do to do that to to make it secure first of all we need to identify what kind of data it is classify label encrypt restrict access there these are some ways we can uh, protect our data if we talk about applications applications and api provide the interface by which data is getting consumed there may be legacy on premises lifted and shifted uh, to cloud workloads or modern saas applications apply controls and technologies to discover shadow it ensure appropriate uh, in app permissions gate access based on real time analytics monitor for abnormal behavior control user actions and validate secure configuration options that's how we can we can apply zero trust approach on the applications then of course infrastructure because where your application is running where your data is is all infrastructure so whether it's on premises or cloud based uh, infrastructure maybe vms or vmss or containers or microservices that's your infrastructure and we should take care of our infrastructure nowadays we are deploying our infrastructure with the help of templates or scripts maybe terraform or arm templates so we should have these configuration checked we should have security applied to this configuration already we should have uh, the the version assessment for those scripts and configurations also jit uh, we should use telemetry to detect attacks and anomalies and automatically block and flag risky behavior and take protective actions there are various tools for that or services provided by azure now last but not the least is the network the sixth pillar or or foundational element with zero trust well all data is ultimately accessed over network infrastructure we all know that so networking controls can provide critical uh, controls to enhance visibility and help prevent attackers from moving laterally across the network if they can compromise one vm they can move to another and another and finally uh, crack the administrator and do whatever they want to do 
but if we have proper controls, it will block the lateral movement. That's why segment your network. Remember, assume breach, if you have proper segmentation, it might have uh, compromised one VM, but it cannot go anywhere else. Proper segmentation and deeper in network micro segmentation and deploy real-time threat protection, end-to-end -end encryption, monitoring, and analytics. All right, well, these are the uh, six elements and we talked little brief about each one of uh, uh, pillars so that we would have an idea how zero trust is applicable to all these foundational elements of, of uh, our environment and how guiding principles can approach towards it, towards this. Well, in Zero Trust Guides, we define the approach to element, uh, to implement end-to-end -end Zero Trust methodology across identities, endpoint devices, data, apps, and for such a network, all these six pillars. These activities increase our visibility, which gives us better data uh, for making trust decisions because we are, gathering all the telemetry and our our tools are working on those telemetry and finding insights out of it with each of these individual area generating their own relevant alerts we need an integrated capability to manage the resulting influx of data to better defend against threats and validate trust in a transaction with zero trust we move away from trust by default perspective to a trust by exception an integrated capability to automatically manage those exceptions and alerts is important so you can more easily find and detect threats, respond to them, and prevent or block undesired events across your organization. Well, this is all about a Zero Trust Overview, a very brief overview. If you want to learn more, stay with this uh, uh, playlist, this series that we are trying to cover as much as we can and let's meet in another video till then